Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. Meeting to order for the Bellows Falls Union High School. I'd like to pledge allegiance to the flag, please. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Did you have one, Priscilla? You said there was something. No, just a minute. correction. Okay. Anyone have any adjustments to the agenda? Molly, I have one. Jason? Molly, I have one if you can hear me. Yes, I can. Hi, everybody. Um, I'd like to, I'd like to um, uh, put into executive session Follow up uh, from April, uh, follow up on guidance counselors' allegations of continuing racial incidents at the high school. Um, Molly, it's Andy. That's Andy. Um, I, I don't know if that would fall under the um, parameters of executive session. Okay. That's my only concern. Um, I don't know what it, as far as what would be a hindrance to public in that conversation. Okay, uh, Kim. So right. Kim, I'm sorry, Jason. But I, but I admit I'm not an expert on the whole thing. So, Jason, I heard executive session and then I lost you. Can you repeat again what you wanted to talk about? So we've asked uh, since the April meeting to follow, and we've asked put this on the agenda every meeting since uh, to follow up on guidance counselors allegations of continuing racial incidents at the high school. So, so I guess my, my question is, are you asking on can follow up as far as any outcomes that um, administration has taken against the or towards the school, the school counselor, or just on the incident of harassment at allegations at the high school? Because I believe Mr. Bradley is going to address that in his comments today. Um, my, my only concern is that he addressed it. Uh, Mr. Bradley addressed it last month. And I don't think uh, or we feel that this has been resolved as far as follow up uh, with the guidance counselor. So then it's a personnel issues that you're speaking about. Yeah, we've asked to put it on the agenda several times and it's has been here. As a board, we don't know why. I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to challenge Jason's, um, request i'm going to tell you why uh, obviously how the school deals with issues that may or may not involve racism or, or other student to student or student to faculty or faculty to faculty matters um, that's policy and um, i'm going to give you two reasons one is how we address these sort of issues is a policy matters not an executive session discussion matter secondly i have uh, shall we say, concerns that if uh, this is uh, in any way viewed as a situation um, that's supposed to have an outcome of a gotcha against a member of this staff, that puts this board on very thin ice. And I would advise the board not to go there. Um, administration has received instruction um, about this situation. And I think that we need to wait for administration to uh, come back to, with an outcome. And I totally agree with Jason Terry that we have not seen uh, that response from administration yet. In fact, that's something I was going to address here a little bit later. So um, 
obviously it's the board chair's call, uh, subject to the board overruling the chair, of course, but it's the board chair's call as to whether we go in or not. But um, I believe that um, under these circumstances that it would be an ill-advised thing to do. Thank you, David. I did a little homework today trying to, you know, make sure I was following all the right rules because there are certain reasons why you go into executive session and and I I didn't know if I didn't know if I could with this and after doing some reading it didn't appear to me that I should either. So thank you for your advice. Um I do know that probably uh Jason we're not gonna get a great answer on this tonight because Mr. Bradley has had to go take care of his mother who has gotten injured and he's in a car headed to her now so he is not able to attend the meeting tonight but um I do know that you know it's been brought up to him several times and and I don't know what he has done but I'm sure that we can have him get us that information <clears throat> Anyone else? Go ahead, Brenda. I'm just sorry, Deb. I'm sorry, are you letting Brenda go first? That's the um, case. That's I was looking at you and calling you Brenda. <laughs> but, um, I simply just want to say that I don't want these kinds of things to languish. And because and I again I don't agree with um with um with going into an executive session on an issue that was stated by a staff member in the public in a public meeting. Therefore, I think it needs to be addressed because it sits in the back of at least some uh, directors' minds, if not some public minds, that that issue has been brought up but not resolved. And now that it's in the open, it needs to be dealt with. But uh, unfortunately, what I see sometimes is that objects and items are brought up that just languish until death, and then they never got addressed in a meeting when they are brought up in a public meeting. And that's it. Thank you. And I think that's what Jason is trying to get at right now. And um, I don't know if there's much we can do um, without John here, but Andy, do you have some guidance? Sorry, um, I, I mean, I can definitely um, go through Mr. Broadley's slides that he provided to the board um, and, and, and try and take some questions that I can bring back to him that we can get some answers for the next board meeting um, based on those slides. Um, I, I don't know if that, I, I mean, I, I know that uh, the diversity committee had asked me to read a statement uh, that they had written. So I was going to do that today. And, um, and also, um, you know, um, just note some of the work that we are trying to do um, from SU level to support the high school. Uh, just all around um, regarding, you know, all issues um, with students. So, um. uh, okay. So I saw Jason had his hand up, Molly, at one point. Jason, you still have an adjustment to the agenda? That's what we're yeah, on right now. I, I, yes, uh, I have one uh, other one. Um, I asked to have uh, on the agenda for this meeting. Uh, and I think I'm fall under under new business uh, to have um, Mr. Broadley and Mr. Haas go uh, uh, from meeting to meeting so we can review for completeness. So some, so stuff like this does not happen uh, going forward, because if we wait until July to address this, now it'll be another month and it'll just be un, uh, not resolved again. So I think as maybe we could. Uh, encourage a policy or I don't know how you would word it, but uh, I'd prefer a punch list. And then once it's completed, just check it off and move forward. So some, the first part of your conversation was, <clears throat> was um, we couldn't hear you, but so under new business, you would like to have, did anybody, I didn't understand. Hey, uh, what you said. Mr. Broadley and Mr. Haas have a, uh, Sorry. 
I'd like them to have a, a punch list, um, complete things and bring it to us every meeting. And when you say complete things, you're talking about things that are on our agenda, like this particular item about the guidance counselor, where where we really haven't seen a a completion of what she she made some strong allegations, and we want to make sure as a board that our school is safe. At, or it could be anything. It could be it it, it could be anything. Whatever whatever we. I'm making an action item for that for the high school to complete. I I'd feel bad knowing that it was complete instead of having a new meeting the next month and talking about new stuff without completing the old stuff. It kind of uh, doesn't seem seems backwards. All right, so we're going to adjust the agenda. Hey, Can I comment? Let me just get this adjustment done, right. and then if you got another adjustment. No, it's it's a comment. I want you to be careful. Can I comment? Go ahead. Um, I I applaud Jason for um, asking for exec session if it's a personnel issue or we're discussing somebody's um, the way they're particularly handling things. But I think we want to be careful because the handling in, in a school is an administrative thing. So I would caution the chair to be careful where yeah, we put that on. We're not putting it in an agenda. executive session. Okay. What then we're we going need to, to do, be careful and not discuss it as a personnel issue. So we are going to put 8A um, to just discuss um, our principal and superintendent on how we could get um, some sort of a, a punch list of completed things that we talk about for the next meeting. We're just going to have a few minutes to just talk about that tonight. That's 8A. Anybody else? Adjustments is what we're on. Okay, communication, public comments. Do we have any? Ricky, do we got anything? I appear to be. Uh, okay. Hands up. Review and approve board minutes for May 23rd. Molly, was the communications from Andy? Better, yeah, um, down here. Down yeah, here. I think that's okay. on the agenda. Thank you. <clears throat> Does anyone have any adjustments on May 23rd? Priscilla, go ahead. Uh, yes, under policy, and where it discusses the following policies we posted on May 18th, F1 was not one of those and was not included there. That should not be there. We actually have that voted on under seven. Okay. So that needs to be removed. Anyone else? My name is missing from attendance. <laughs> I was here. Okay. So we need to add Tanya Noise to attendance. Anyone else? I'd like a motion to approve the minutes as corrected. So moved. Seconded. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the minutes with the corrections made to take off policy F1 and to add Tanya Noise as attending. Deb, how do you vote? Aye. Jason? Aye. Priscilla? Yes. June? Yes. Tanya? Yes. David? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Okay, the minutes are approved. We're down to reports and we'd like to have the superintendent. Yeah, thank you, Molly. So um, I've been asked by the um, Diversity and Equity Committee um, to read a, a letter that uh, was written uh, members um, the, the lead members uh, weren't able to make tonight's meeting, um, but it is a committee that's been, uh, as far as I know, uh, since coming to WNSU four years ago, has been in existence. I don't know if it existed prior to that, um, but um, so it's been there uh, for the four years. I've been a, a member when I'm able to make it um, those the for the four years. Um, but um, so dear, uh, 
Bells Falls Union High School School Board members, we, the WNESU Diversity and Equity Committee, DEC, are committed to implementing the standards set forth by the Vermont. Thank you. The Vermont <laughs> Principal Association and the Vermont Department of Ed. Should be Agency of Ed, so I apologize. Uh, we intend to provide an education that prepares our students to become global citizens who contribute to a world where everyone is treated with dignity and respect regardless of race, class, gender, religion, sexual orientation, or disability. We know this means taking on challenging issues that are complex in order to ensure issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion are addressed in meaningful ways for all. On March 14th, Grace Juarez, a junior at Bells Falls Union High School, attended a school board meeting and made a proposal to fly the Black Lives Matter flag at BFUHS. The WNESU Diversity and Equity Committee would like this letter to serve as an official statement to support for Grace's proposal. Grace stated that racism is an issue in Bellows Falls and that flying the flag would support the BIBOC, Black, Indigenous, and People of Color citizens in our community. She cited a personal example of racist language used within her earshot in the BFUHS cafeteria on the very day of her proposal. In a restorative circle just last week, a student shared with the DEC member that racist comments <clears throat> happen all the time, often in, in friend groups joking. This particular student of color said they just swear at them and they usually stop. The Black Lives Ladder Black Lives Matter movement <clears throat> affirms the value of black lives in response to systematic racism that impacts every institution in the United States. The BLM flag symbolizes a commitment to creating a just, equitable, and empathetic world, especially for our students of color. In Vermont schools, the data is clear. Students of color are disproportionately suspended, have lower graduation rates, and are subjected to racist remarks on a regular basis. The Bellows Falls community is not immune. Regardless of the decision the board makes about the BLM flag, the Diversity and Equity Committee is grateful to Grace Juarez for her proposal. She brought a very difficult issue to the forefront. And our hope is that it serves as an impetus for our school community to engage in a dialogue that will leave us with a greater understanding of racial inequity in Vermont and our country as a whole. Fortunately, the WNESU and the Vermont Agency of Education have committed to implementing restorative practices. As it offers our school communities a unique opportunity to create safe space where students can dig deeply into issues. Students learn that skills necessary to engage in dialogue where they can respectfully disagree and center each other's humanity. Additionally, the Diversity and Equity Committee and many teachers throughout the WNESU work dil diligently to, to bridge divides and address these and other issues through content and social emotional curriculum. All of us, all staff, all faculty, all of our boards and all of our students would benefit greatly from anti-bias and anti-racism training, as well as well-oiled well restorative practice machine. These are when the hard conversations take place this is when growth happens. With the support of leadership in our district and expertise of the Greater Falls Community Justice Center, we intend to host courageous conversations, opportunities to come together in safe places, to have honest discussions, hear one another's voices, and come, and come to common understanding. We look forward to the invitations for you to join these opportunities led by trained facilitators that will employ the restorative practices so that the community can see the benefits firsthand. Thank you for your time and consideration. With good intent and sincerity, the WNESU uh, Equity Committee. Um, just to follow up, um, I'd just like to share um, with the board and community, um, the reason I'm not there in person is I'm actually in Killington, Vermont at what is called the Best Institute. And it's a, um, a four-day conference put on by the uh, Vermont Agency of Education for multi-tiered systems of support. And the, the purpose is to uh, bring teams together to discuss these type of issues and how we support students, how do we change our instructional practices. Um, and when we wrote the grant to bring uh, staff here, uh, we 
use the lens of restorative practices and social emotional learning. So we actually have three um, buildings represented here, um, up here at the conference. Um, on, Mr. Broadley had a, um, you know, a commitment with his family, so he wasn't able to, um, to bring someone from his building. Um, but it's exactly what we're trying to do at the SU level is to address not just the high school, but systemically what we're doing and how we're addressing issues throughout our entire SU. Um, it's why we're looking to um, add a restorative practice uh, person devoted uh, mm -hmm. to the high school. Um, we're looking at trying to couple that position um, with a diversity and equity coordinator, um, which is actually required by the state of Vermont now. Um, and uh, so we're looking to bring on someone who has that strength um, and can bring us um, uh, that support. And, and, and to be very frankly, answer the questions that the high school board is asking, uh, to be able to provide data right away um, to the high school, um, but any board uh, when they're asking. Um, so we are uh, looking at addressing the issues. We've had some meetings um, with the Greater Falls Community Justice um, and looking at how we can do it. I know, as I said earlier, Mr. Broadley was looking to, um, if you were here today, we had a presentation uh, around harassment um, and looking back five years. Um, and as I said, I'm, I will do my best to go through the slides um, and take down any notes and try and get those answers to board members. Um, and if I can get them ahead of time, we'll make sure we get them to you before the meeting, the next meeting, because uh, I know it would be a, a while away. So that is all I have right now, um, Molly. Andy, can you tell me who's on the diversity committee? Um, so it, it it ranges. Um, there's some standard, um, or not standard, but um, some folks that are on there on a um, continuous basis. So uh, Stuart Strothman um, is uh, co-chair along with Carrie Kennedy. Uh, Laura uh, Dabochnik um, is on the committee. Andrea Carlson, uh, Thurston uh, Koch, um, Dina um, Weiss uh, Tisman, uh, myself. Deb Whitkiss, uh, Carrie Newton, um, Stephanie Fuller, uh, Olivia Clark was, she just, she is leaving us um, and, and going to uh, Wyndham Southeast um, in, on July 1st. And then there's a, there's a few other members who come and go. So um, I do know that when this letter was being shared, not everyone could be in attendance um, while it was being uh, put on. Um, it was shared with members of the committee um, and many um, actually emailed after you guys got it and said, please add my name to it. Um, so um, it, it's a committee that I'd like to see grow. I think it's important. Um, it, it provides a voice um, for our teachers, but also um, listens to our students and helps um, provide our student voices, um, which I think is probably, if you had to ask me, one of the most important things we do is, is fostering our student voice and um, we, I think we need to encourage it even more um, from our students and not just at the high school level but across the entire SU. Go ahead, Thank you, Molly. This is a highly politicized letter that we've received from your committee, Andy, and I would like to respond to it. I'm going to take note of the fact that on April 11, Andrea Carlson did appear before this board, and um, I have condensed her remarks. Andrea said, I have worked here for 20 years, and during that time it has been reported to me each year that racial incidents happen regularly at BFUHS. On the 14th of April, three days later, an agenda item was forwarded for consideration, um, which was new business. Follow up on Andrea Carlson's allegations of racial harassment at the high school. This did not appear on the agenda of April 25th. And on um, May 17, a new agenda item was forwarded for consideration. And that item was steps taken to address allegations of inappropriate um, behavior towards minority members of the BFUHS community. Regrettably, that did not make it on the agenda of um, May 23rd. So I'm making an assumption here. And my assumption 
is that this letter is the administration's response to this request. So I have a question for the committee and uh, I will frame it for you here. At the November 10 WNESU meeting, the high school board chair walked out of the room while Curtis Reed of the Partnership for Fairness and Diversity was addressing the board. And when he finished, she walked back in again. And on November 17, I sent a request for a high school agenda item called Discussion of Possible Censure of Board Chair, which was also not acted on. I'm wondering, the WNESU Diversity and Equity Committee would like to have a courageous and honest conversation to use their language about how we respond to opinions we may not agree with particularly when they have potential implications for matters of race. Um, as I said before, I think this is a highly charged letter from your committee, Andy, and I'm asking your committee if they want to actually discuss some of the uh, things which both have gone on at BFUHS and uh, the things which have been alleged to go on at BFUHS. Um, thank you. It's a feel good. I'm glad you wrote it. I think Grace Warriors did a great job. But if your committee is serious about doing the work, let's see some of these issues start to be addressed. April, May, June, almost July. Let's get with it. Thank you. Go ahead, Jim. Molly, if I may. Go ahead. So, um, David, I, I don't disagree with you on, on many of your uh, of your points. Um, I would like to point out that this is not my committee. Um, I am a, a member of the committee. Um, I don't chair the committee. Um, I'm Because of my schedule, I don't make a lot of the committee meetings. Um, I agreed with many parts of the letter because I believe in student voice and I believe we need to allow all of our students an opportunity to speak. Um, and that to me is what democracy is um, and, and have difficult conversations. I will say, and I, I've said it, uh, one of the reasons why I asked John Ungeleiter to come and speak with the board was exactly to address some of those issues, to bring them to, to explain to the board some of the things we were doing and some of the conversations behind the scenes. Um, we didn't, um, I had asked uh, Mr. Broadley to, um, get a committee together of students and to discuss all of these issues. Uh, I've asked Mr. Broadley numerous times um, since Ms. Juarez did her presentation to provide that information to the board. I don't have access to that information, but I've asked Mr. Broadley to do it. I believe Mr. Broadley is trying to bring some information to the board at this time. Um, I, I can go back to the committee and I can bring your suggestion that they come and speak directly with the board. I'm sure that if their schedules, you know, can align, that they would probably be very happy to, but I can't speak for the committee. Whose committee is it, Andy? It, it belongs, it, it was a committee that was, as I said, it, I don't know the origins of the, of the beginning of it, but it was a committee that was put out there when I came on as Director of Student Services, I was told that there was a diversity and equity committee. I belonged to it at a uh, former district in Vermont. And so I said I would be a part of it because I believe in the diversity and equity and the, and the work that they do. Who is this committee responsible to, Andy? Again, I, David, if, it, if they're supposed to be responsible to, if I'm supposed to be responsible for them, I, I guess, um, but uh, it, as I said, I don't know who set it up. I don't know what the governance is of that committee. It was not something that I put together, nor do I have, I haven't had oversight of it. Thank you, Molly. Molly, it's been at least six years that that committee's been, been on board. Go ahead, June. Um, I have a couple of comments, I guess. Um, one question does this committee keep minutes so we can go back and find read minutes and stuff that's my first question and the second 
This letter sounds like a whole lot of what Andrea had brought up in her letter that she read to us. Um, and this letter coming from a committee would have meant a whole lot more to me if the letter was signed by the members. I know for a fact that the school board before I got here um, had at least eight letters that were not signed um, and they were not read because they were not signed. So I guess that's my first question was, yep. you know, do they have a, do they take minutes? So, so in response to both of those, June, um, very good points. Yes, they do take minutes um, and they are kept. Um, and the letter is signed because I would not read a letter if it wasn't signed. Um, and the letter um, that I've had forwarded to you does list um, those members, as I, I believe, as I just stated, that the letter had been shared with um, members of the committee. Not all had had a chance to um, speak on it. It was then I knew I needed to get it out um, to you guys ahead of time. Um, it was sent out. Um, it's signed by Stuart, uh, Carrie, Laura, Andrea, Thurston, Dina, myself, Deb, and Carrie Newton. And since then, other members of the committee have said, please sign my name to it. So um, I agree with you. I would not bring a letter to the board that was anonymous. Okay. I didn't take those as signatures because they were typed. So sorry, because it was, it, was, it, was it was a Word document that was being shared. Okay, so, thank you. But I could share those emails where people were agreeing to be a part of it if you'd like. No, that's fine. Anyone else got any other comments? So I have a couple comments. I've heard probably since November 10th about restorative practices. And that's, it feels like that's all we talk about is restorative practices. And even though I've done exactly what everybody felt I needed to do to save my face. So November 10th is never going to go away from my history, but I did it and I owned it and I stood in front of you all and did what I felt was the right thing at the next meeting and then had a meeting with that gentleman. And because I didn't agree with what he was saying, I didn't say anything mean, I didn't do anything, but I did remove myself so that was the wrong move. So what I'm really struggling right now is that we've spent 33 minutes almost other than pledging allegiance to the flag and two minutes on an agenda on really what we're getting at is a guidance counselor who came into a meeting and had some really, really strong words to say to some really good people and has never come back to this board and had anything to say to the public or to this board about what she said. She chose the wrong words, maybe. I chose the wrong thing in a lot of people's eyes, getting up and removing myself from a place where I didn't believe what the man was saying. But I was held accountable for that. And I think what most of us as board members are struggling with is she has not been accountable for what she did at the next meeting. And that, I believe, is what we're struggling with. This letter has that person right behind it. It's very obvious it does. I'm not telling you I disagree with this letter, but what I'm telling you is I'm held accountable every day because I made a move that somebody didn't like, but she has not been held accountable to us as board members, respecting us as board members, and the people that she offended a lot. And those were good men in this building. They were good men. They were business owners. They were fire chiefs. They were fathers. They were good people. And they got accused of something wrong. So I've said my two cents. Andy, your hands up. Thank you, Molly. I guess um, we're, we're diving a little bit into the supervision evaluation piece. I, I do understand and respect your concern and, and, and duly noted about a public apology. Um, 
my my concern is is that you know um the difficulty is when when we do take action and address an issue with a staff member um we can't always discuss the outcomes and and whatnot um the other piece is and, and where i just to say i struggle personally is i would never want to um um sequester or 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 or, or try to influence any staff member from coming forward to speak um, as a um, during public comment um, because I think that just like student voice teacher voice needs to be heard and they need to do so without fear of retribution um, and if any staff member if they want to come and say something negative about me um, and they're fearful that I'm going to have retribution for that um, they're not going to come forward. And so we don't have an open and transparent community. We have one that then sits behind the scenes. And so that's that's my concern. I, I understand exactly what you're asking for, Molly, and um, and 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 fully respect it. I respect that um, you um, addressed the issue with with Mr. Reed and um, and took ownership for that and I appre I'm appreciative of it but that that is my concern just thinking of supervision of any staff member if we're demanding um, types of um, you know apologies and whatnot does that put us in a situation of uh, fear of retribution so that that's my only concern on that I'm sorry, I don't know the lady's name above Fat TV. Deb Witekas. I'm sorry, who is Deb, isn't it? It's not the Deb, I believe. You have your hand up. Yeah, pardon me. Um, I uh, just wanted to say, I'm not sure if I can even speak. Can I speak? Because I was, I'm on the equity. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, I have been on the um, equity um, committee uh, for a few years. It was, uh, in fact, started by Chris Pratt um, and uh, <clears throat> Lynn Carey. And um, I um, came into this um, personally because I, I believe that we can do this as you know, I think I've heard in one of the school board meetings, we can do this in a very different way rather than, you know, shutting people, shutting each other down or, you know, you know, leaning into the political nature um, that we can do this in a way where we're talking neighbors to neighbors. And I, you know, I just, I just respect, um, respect you so much for, um, you know, holding yourself accountable. I try to do it myself and I have to do it all the time. And, and on the equity committee, we have courageous conversations because we have points of disagreement. And I would have to say that over time, um, <clears throat> we've, you know, people have grown in their understanding that this type of work does take courage and it takes us all holding ourselves accountable for our actions and it, it also takes faith that we can you know we can learn and we can grow together um, and the only other thing I would like to add is um, that I have enjoyed about being on this committee as a community organization is um, that we're not you know, we're not just talking about race or gender or, you know, sexual orienting. We're also talking about there's a large percentage of um, students that are stuck in generational poverty and they are a marginalized group and they happen to be majority white students. And we, we want to be able to make sure that they also feel comfortable and empowered and have a voice at school. So I, I, I think that, um, you know, I think this is a, an amazing community that is um, primed to be able to sit down and talk neighbor to neighbor and have tough conversations. And, 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 and I believe our, all of our hearts are in the right place. And that's all I want to say. Um, you know, if I would try to take some questions, I can't speak for everyone on the committee. Um, and I, I think that um, I personally have advocated for us to really take an approach that gets the politics out of the personal, um, because we're all living in the um, same community, sending our kids, and we all deeply care about them. Thank you. Deb, your hand is up. 
I'll put it down. <laughs> no, Deborah. I think I wasn't the first one. Um, I think maybe Jason or someone else. I'd like to be polite and give the right time, but all I have, but so if you're, since you're listening to me, I'll just say what I think, which is that I do not believe that personnel have, um, should not, that's my concern, is, and as business owner, that they should not come directly to the board. They have a chain of command to deal with, to address their concerns. That's my biggest issue with feeling in some ways, and I am on the VLCT, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee, so everyone's aware where I'm coming from here, that shaming people into doing what you want is not the way to go. And that's an inappropriate. And when you're inside of the, in, the system, which this person was, there were other ways for her to address her concerns that were not in front of the board. And I do not believe based upon the fact that we haven't the information that that didn't, did or didn't happen, but that is the way it should go. If you work in the system, you deal with the system. We can't walk into the building and speak to her directly about our concerns as board members. We have to go through her her managers, her administration. We do that. That is the proper place to do that. But that means that also the other side matters too, that there are proper chain of command ways to address issues. And now we are left with this hanging out thing that has not, that leaves us all incomplete. And we need to address that. And now moving it through this letter, this highly politically charged letter, as David has stated, is another way to push the board. That's my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Jason, you had your hand up. Do you have something? Uh, I do. I have pretty bad internet. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Um, I just wanted it. I'm hearing you guys. and and. And I just wanted to make sure that somebody had mentioned with uh, Andrea's comments if they're accurate or not. And I think her comments were very important and we need to investigate them. And that's all I simply been asking is if they're if it's factual, what are we doing about it? If it's not factual, what are we doing about integrity? That's it. That's simple. Thank you. Thank you. A follow on question, please. Yes, sir. OK. Um, I want to state clearly and unequivocally that I do not believe that uh, faculty are an excluded class when it comes to public comment. I think they have just as much right to come into this room and speak to us as any other member of the public. I will note that um, Andrew Carlson uh, lives in Westminster, is a neighbor. Um, and um, I think that we also need to bear in mind at all times that uh, her comments um, are protected by statute uh, against retaliation on the part of her employers. And in this particular case, her employers are a food chain that runs right up to this board. So I think we need to be extremely careful about singling particular members of staff out when we don't think that we like what we're hearing from them. Um, secondly, I want to reiterate, Jason Terry just nailed it there. It's not what Andrea Carlson said. It's how this administration, because that is the chain of command, has addressed those concerns. And it's been three months since we heard those concerns without any apparent follow-up from the administration. And I think the time has come that we have that follow-up. Andy, do you have anything else? No, I, I, I duly noted that um, what the board is looking for, and I will make sure that we get the best answers we can by July to let you know. Thank you. It's on you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, 
The last time we met, I handed out a sheet, a one page sheet, which showed the budget and expenditures by what they call objects, salaries, benefits, and other cost data. This particular one is by function, and that's how we kind of track our expenditures. Um, and I will say for fiscal year 22 budget actual data, it's, it's the third column or fourth column over uh, to the left. And that is as of uh, maybe the 20, 26, 24th, um, June 24th. So we've not completed everything as yet. Now, I just want to tell you in the accounting for your expenditures, we, we deal with it. it's very important to get the account structure, which is a 20 digit account. And it, 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 every digit has to be an exact match. Because if it's not, and this is where you're at, and I'll just be, be very blunt with you. If you go down towards the bottom where it says food service, 30, that's function 3100, you'll see there a $221,000 amount. Andy, I'm sorry you don't have this. I'll, I'll try to get with it, but I just finished it this afternoon. Um, so I apologize. But so, and if you look at the 221 and you say, well, wait a minute, the budget for next year is 58,000. What's going on? Well, I haven't tracked it down yet, but, but I suspect that somewhere there was expenses that were just put the wrong account number to. And and uh, uh, <laughs> I, I got to tell you, this is where we're, we're 14 foot down in the hole right now. And if you if you can, you know, visually think about 14 feet down and trying to climb out, you're going to struggle. And uh, I think that's that's where we're at, and and we just have to make sure each entity has the right charges as well as uh, each account. And uh, we're, we're working furiously on trying to put this together and try to get there. Right now, um, the other twist that happens, and right, wrong, or indifferent, is the, the SU <clears throat> picks up some monies that belong to the high school that are not SU expenditures. And I'll phrase it. So substitutes is $54,000 of substitute monies that we've got to charge back. And I've done it. I've included here $140,000 of outside expenditures. But but I got to tell you, just in the accounting realm, boy, there's a lot of back and forth. And I mean, I'm saying, holy cow, are you kidding me? And I, and I mean that in a sincere, upfront way. You know, I, I just, and if you say, well, doesn't that happen everywhere? And I'm going to tell you, nope, it doesn't. And, and, you know, this is, <clears throat> this is like having to unravel some knotted ball. And the problem is I can't unravel it quick enough <laughs> because it needs to be done. So I, I, I just say, wow, uh, that's where we're at. Ursula. Um, I'm not understanding the titles at the top. You've got okay. 23 adopted budget, 24 yes. proposed, and then you got 2020 increase so, and decrease. Yep. Okay. So the 24. That's not here yet. We're, it's not here yet, but um, 
we're developing databases, people's databases. And 72% of your costs are with people, salaries and benefits. Not, not a big mystery. So we're developing these databases so that when our superintendent finishes with a negotiated contract, it will automatically roll forward if we know who we have for employees. And you've got, geez, I don't know, 300 employees? I don't know how many, Andy, do you have any guess? I, anyways, you got a lot. You got a lot, but we've got to know who the heck we have. And that's, that's another piece of this, this ugly pie. Um, and, and as we, so as this database starts to become live, and it is all connected now, so that the, this data, this 2,910,000, that's picking up live bodies of people we know we have. The thing that that's, hasn't, uh, I have not switched over the negotiated contract for next year as yet, because I want to first see, and that's a good comparison. I mean, you you can see where you're at from this year, this 2864, 792 compared to the 2910. It tells you close with the number of people you've got in that database that's picking up salaries and, and benefits. But we need, I mean, this is in a 98% close. I mean, this is 100% accurate data that has to be in there. So the 24, it, the salary and benefits will become live and be put into each function. So that, um, and I, I just say this media center, if you look at um, under the 23, the middle column, you have 111,000. Now, that's what was budgeted and pulled in, easy to put in. What comes on the data, live data, is 106, 921. And so that's pulling out live people. Whether you had a change of one person, could be. But, but that's why it's picking up live data right now. All of the, um, <clears throat> the non-personnel piece, I've just parroted from last year, but we'll sit down and talk as we go forward. So this is, for me, the budgeting piece is the critical component in your whole financial aspect. Because once you've got this down and the information is live, you'll know where you are. You won't guess. You'll say, right there, that's where I am. So. Hey. <laughs> well, <clears throat> that 14-foot hole that you referred to is called e-finance, and I believe that it was supposed to align us with the 22 or 32-digit federal charter of accounts. Mm -hmm. It didn't work. This was a pilot district. Uh, we did the beta testing on behalf of um, the Agency of Education. Took him a few years to understand it was a total and complete disaster. And I'm sorry that you left to pick up the pieces from a colossal blunder um, from Montpelier that was based on low bidder. Cheap is not always a good value. No, a pretty good no, example. It isn't. I have one comment that I want to make about funds that flow back toward the high school, and that is when you're talking about personnel. You probably know this, and forgive me for saying this, but we have teachers who teach in multiple districts. Those teachers, I believe, are in the SU payroll, and then those costs are reported back out to the districts. And I'm guessing maybe that's part of what you're struggling with here. We're breaking in the, in the database for live people. If somebody's working 0.2% over at one school and the rest, we're splitting those up. So that, as I say, in the end, this is 100% accuracy. So, so it will, whatever cell is being pulled, it'll pull it to the right place. And, and I just want to tell you, in the big scheme of things, and, I, and I'm not sure, I mean, I, I think we're probably 15 million in, in federal projects, 23 million in 
uh, general fund monies. That's small. I mean, holy cow, are you kidding me? That's small in relation to what the size, you've got Keen, that's probably a $100 million operation. Uh, Hartford, which is $42 million operation. So it's not that this isn't, I mean, um, it's not so big that we can't control it. We can and should, and uh, it's just getting that ball unraveled fast enough to get there. Wow. Ian, do you have your hand up? Thank you, Molly. And I, I just wanted, and, and, and Jim can correct me here if I'm, I'm way off base, but my understanding, kind of like what Priscilla was saying, uh, or the question she was asking and kind of answering that a little bit, with what Jim has been putting together in the conversations I've been having, by having all of this in there, we will always be able to fairly accurately predict where our next year's budget is going to kind of start coming out because our payrolls are, are consistent. I mean, th those don't change. And so, um, but, and also with what David was saying, I don't, we're, Jim and his team have been working to do that, dividing people out in those, those point twos and point threes. But I don't know if for the last couple of years, that's always been the practice. And so it's created kind of a, a, a bigger problem um, because I, I do recall back when Edie was, was there, that's how my budget was broken out. I remember the first time I looked at it, I, I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. I mean, I got a point six of a person and a point this and a point, you know, but it was all very, once I figured out what she was doing and how she had it coded, I could see where everyone was pulling from each diff different line. And I, I think that we got away from that practice. E-finance didn't help us. Um, and, and so, you know, like Jim says, it's unraveling that ball of twine. So um, I, I do appreciate what he and his team have been doing. Um, and he's been keeping me up to, you know, up to date where they are so that we, we have some, you know, we're getting, we're getting closer. Um, it, it's just, I think all of us, including Jim would have, would like to be moving at light speed here and, and, but to do it right, we got to, you know, we got to make sure it's accurate. So. Jim. Um, Jim, hi. hi. Um, I am told that the, uh, that Westminster, the town of Westminster overpaid, um, the district. And I was wondering what column the reimbursement to them comes out of on this. This, this is just um, the high school piece. Oh, okay. And um, what happens is the state of Vermont, um, they control all of the property taxes in the state. So as they true up adjustments in the property tax rates, they will then crank out, um, it, it's, a, it's a budget sheet. And I, I want to say, I, there were two pieces, and I think we sent the check off already. I, but I think it was like fifty thousand. I may okay. be wrong All on right. that, but yeah, I was just at the last select board meeting, and we're trying to close out our yes. fiscal, but fiscal sent, year also. So I was just wondering if it fell in here somewhere. No, but Westminster will get you know similar similar uh, flow sheets for the expense, and I I just again I I will say you know I'm I'm new but not new to finance. And I will say there's, there's one other sheet, the object sheet, the function sheet, and then there's the revenue sheet, which, which I don't know if you've ever had one, but I guess not, because I've never seen one. We used but, to. but you need a revenue sheet to go along with that because you should be able to get a property tax projection with your budget. And I mean, <laughs> Holy cow! Um, maybe fifteen foot down. It's been it's been <laughs> missing for, in action for a couple of years. I, you know, and I try to work on it in my spare time, but wow. Well, wait till you get out of that fifteen foot hole, and then you can work on that. Mm -hmm. get us back. Come on, Jason. I'm Jason, your hand's been up for a while. An answer mine. Thank you. Um, I believe I heard uh, Jim say that we had over three hundred employees at the high school is that correct district-wide 
district wide. So we have uh, currently 314 students, just so you're aware. Um, and I think that these are really good topics that we ought to be discussing a lot. And um, uh, just the importance of this is huge. And thank you. I forget what I was going to say. Priscilla, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, but I part of my question was the fact that 2020, why are we not comparing 2021 to 2022 rather than well, 2020? You know, um, uh, yes, I mean, you could compare it, you know, to all three. I mean, it's just um, the real estate. I mean, I, I could put a, a wider page and I hope to have a a 14 by 18 sheet eventually, which would give me another column. Um, right now, for me to pull that off from this e-finance system would just take a lot more time. I'm using 2020. Well, um, the, the, the 23 I have, I know for certain because you just passed the 23. So, so I, that was a, that was my May project, is to pull all that data and push it into where it has to go to recode it. That was May. And um, the, the comparative, because you always want to know where you are against actual against budget. But I, I, again, I hope that I can show you that that's not as, um, it's not the type of information Again, you, you'll want to spend a lot of time where you want to spend time. But for me, the three comparatives are where you've been for this, this year, this current year, where you're going next year, and then being able to project in the future. Um, because you, you also, I mean, most people, most taxpayers want to control their tax, property tax dollars. Now, they care about education dearly, but you know what? We all have our limits as to how much. And so, so these three columns, they really direct a little bit of what you want to have for a system. And I, I will say this, Priscilla, I, I spent five years on a school board. The information that I got, this wasn't my full-time job. And I mean, I, I had an inch and a half of paper that I couldn't sort through. And I mean, I, I, listen, I, if I spent two hours at every night, I don't think that I could get results of where I wanted. This was developed so that you who are not in finance every day can easily go through and say, hey, I got you. I know where you're at. That's what I want you to end up with, you know, so that you're not guessing. And to be honest with you, my hope is that you're going to spend a heck of a lot less time on finance and more on education. That's where you want to be. Reach into the wire, right? Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody have any more questions on financing or for Jim? Jim, it's my understanding that you have quite a ride home. So thank you very much. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, principal report. <clears throat> Have you got that, Andy? Yeah, let me just pull it up here. Um, I apologize. <clears throat> I thought I had it open already. Um, um, so, um, this is uh, John's report, um, HVAC update. Uh, he met with Mike Sullivan on 620 to discuss the new draft of the work needed. Uh, he was very clear the work needed um, as per the report. The hope would be to design and put out the bid, the, the work specific in the next few months, and then have a recommendation for our board to vote on the contractors. Uh, this amount would then be pushed up to the ESSER and hopefully approved. Uh, he would be able to begin to work on parts that uh, could be done while this building is populated and look to finished work at the end of summer 23. 
I asked Mike about the needs to test for PCP and his reply echoed what our state said to have the HVAC work completed as it only will help to lower the results of the testing of the PCPs. I will forward the updated report when I get it. If I may just add in there, um, we did have a meeting with um, uh, Vermont Efficiency. Um, we were, um, they, they did, they had, um, grant monies that we had applied for um, with uh, around HVAC. Uh, we didn't make their first cut, um, but after they finished their first rounds, uh, we were um, considered for the second round. We had a meeting with uh, that person, um, I think the week of graduation. Um, it sounded like we might possibly uh, get approved. We're still just waiting for that approval um, that a portion of the total project might, uh, uh, as I say, be covered under uh, this other grant money. Um, and so uh, the frustration that I think John and every principal and every person here is when I, when I talk about ESSER funds, we were told to pump the brakes and not move, um, move forward with uh, project approval um, for the HVAC system at the high school. Because if we had project approval or if we were applying for project approval, we would not be able to access the Vermont energy efficiency funds. So, um, so we're, we're waiting. Um, uh, they said that we should hear something in early July. Um, so I'm, I'm going to, um, I've got a, an email loaded up to go out to um, uh, the person in charge of that grant to see, uh, because if we can get some funds um, they they wouldn't take care of all they don't have enough funds obviously to do all of our um, work and there were other buildings that were considered um, even within our su um, but uh, and i don't have it in front of me and i apologize but like the their part of the grant might cover the work that needs to be done in a wing let's say and so therefore we can parse that out of this whole proposal and Vermont efficiency can pay for the A wing and then ESSER funds can pay for the rest of the wings. So um, just to kind of let the board know where that, that lies. Um, uh, graduation uh, went very well for the class of 2022. Um, both Molly, you and I had an opportunity. I know Jason was there as well. Um, it was a great event, it was a little windy, but on um, Ms. Streeter, you were there too, I believe. Um, so it was a little windy, but it was uh, great to see the graduates. The students behaved well and enjoyed their project grad through their through the parade on Sunday. The parade uh, through town after the event was spe uh, spectacular, with most of the town coming out to celebrate our students. The uh, U.S. News and World reports, um, <clears throat> and John has it linked here, um, had our school ranked at uh, 16th um, from the 2021 school year performance. Uh, there are many indicators, but the two most important ones are graduation rate and AP scores, and that's the uh, percentage of students taking AP classes. Um, it is his perception that the school year 2022 will show improvements in these two areas. And then he's also attached um, five-year data on hazing, harassment, and bulletin, bullying reports. Um, and I can, as I, as I said, I could, I can, uh, Take questions on those um, I, and try and answer them, um, but I, 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 would, I don't want to speak for the high school or for John, um, not knowing exactly all about that data. So, Go ahead. <clears throat> Andy, um, I don't have my computer, but did you get a um, answer from John um, within the last couple of hours on whether or not these were confirmed cases after the investigation? Yeah, you know what? He he actually sent it right back to me. He didn't he didn't see he didn't reply to all, unfortunately, because he's traveling. Um, he said these uh, uh, these are all reported cases that have been investigated and results and consequences applied, um, and they've been uh, fully dealt with. Um, so, uh, what I interpret from that is um, when when a student comes forward, what you have to do is um, you have to look at the matter and you have to you have to make a decision. Does it is it harassment or or is it hazing or is it bullying? 
And um, a lot of times um, Vermont, well, not a lot of times, Vermont has very um, strict about um, harassment needs to fit into one of nine protected categories. So a lot of times we, we use the word harassment a little loose and we say, this person's harassing me. Um, and, and when you look into it, it doesn't fit into one of these nine protected categories, which I should be able to go off the top of my head, but you know, race, religion, uh, creed, uh, sex, sexual orientation, um, and, yeah, and disability, and I'm now forgetting uh, three of them, so I apologize. Um, so it has to fit into those nine protected categories to be considered harassment. So when you get, when a complaint comes in, you look at it, is it, is it there? Then for bullying, uh, bullying has very specific. Um, so it has to be student on student. Um, and then it has to be a one-time event that is egregious um, or it has to be repeated over time. So you have to look into that and see if it's repeated over time. And then uh, hazing um, has to do around the initiation piece. And so you have to, that's what administration has to look at when they begin. Um, and so not everything uh, falls into those categories. And so then therefore just your student code of conduct takes over. So, um, so what I'm interpreting from John's remarks is that those are the ones that were uh, reported, found to be um, factual and looking into um, uh, having met the, those criteria, those different criteria, and then therefore were uh, addressed. So, um, but I can double check with that. Is that all re reported cases or is that just confirmed cases? Go ahead, Jim. So on this first graph, am I correct in saying that in 2021 and 2022, we only had one confirmed case of harassment that was found to be uh, after the investigation to, to, that it was found to be bullying and harassing. Um, so Remind which which again. which graph are you looking at? Um, like Ricky, do I have right? permission to share my screen? I do. Absolutely. Okay, let me. Can you all see that? The, these are the, the which ones are you talking about here, uh, June? One. Just so I can pull up the right one. Uh, that one right now. Yes. Okay. So in this graph, what this is showing is in 2017, 18, there were two uh, harassment cases um, that dealt with race, and then in 2018, 2019 there would have been none. And then one in 2019, 2020, two in 2021, and one this past year. And, and so, as I said, those, um, my interpretation of that, and so please, I, 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 if I could have just a little bit of, because uh, John and I have not had a chance to have a, a conversation around these. My interpretation is these are reported and confirmed. Okay. So I guess I'm not sure what the next two graphs or three graphs are showing us. This, then if we've this only one, had one, this, we've this only graph one. here, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this graph here is looking at eight of the protected categories i'm trying to see which one is missing um and they might be combining um um two two of the sex ones uh together um because sometimes that happens so you're looking at in the last five years no because he's added bullying so there's there's almost been almost 12 percent of of the um of the confirmed cases they have on harassment hazing and bullying have been 12% of them have been for bullying. Uh, almost 9% have been around a, a disability. And you can see that 20.6 have been around a race. So that's looking, I believe, again, and I'll, I'll have to double check with John, is if you were to look at all of these and put them into a pie chart, so all of these um, cases, that's how they break out of, of how they fit into those different categories. Um, so this is just a, looking at that same graph over 
uh, linear as opposed to a pie chart. Out of the seven total confirmed Boeing and harassment cases we've had since 2017, 20% were race. Because I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that this doesn't look in five years. It was only 34. Not that any is good, but but this doesn't look bad to me if we've only had and unless i'm reading it wrong so so again i and i think um what miss carlson was 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 mentioning and just my tenure as a, as a building administrator oftentimes things don't always raise they don't always go up to the level of, of an hhb is is the the acronym we use or hazing harassment or bullying team. so they don't end up on a report um, but there is a uh, there can be a culture in a in a in a building that exists that you work to try and um, address that culture um, that students might use and, and a lot of times students um, might think that something and I think that was in the letter from the the committee students often the intent is is to be joking um, in a in a, a familiar way but in hazing harassment and bullying it falls on the perception of the individual and so if that individual perceives that it is um that they are being harassed in a way or bullied then that's when it raises to this to this level and and um and so it's one of the things as a building administrator you have to tease out so there might have only been in the last five years 34 confirmed cases um and, and as I think I heard Molly say, you know, one is probably too many um, kind of thing. Um, there might be additionals that are out there. So. And then this chart, um, I think it's just looking at that data another way, just the trends of, you can see that in, in 2000, 18 2019 there was quite a few decreases but you had an increase of, of confirmed sexual um, harassment um, but a decrease in um, what appears to be disability uh, race and and religion so um, I, I mean I can I can speak um, anecdotally from when I was a building administrator and I'd come on new at a building, um, if you looked at five-year trend um, as, as administrative staff and we did this, we, we went back and we looked at our HHB. When we all kind of started, because we were all fairly new uh, to that building, our HHB was very high our first year. Um, and because our the way we looked at and interpreted uh, what was harassment and bullying um, was was we we had a very low tolerance, and so therefore we were we were holding kids highly accountable. Um, and and as we did more education over years, you saw that our numbers decreased dramatically over five years, and it was because we the education we did with kids and get them to understand that when you when you make a comment. Um, or you put a comment on Facebook that that can be considered harassment or that can be considered bullying. And so it takes a lot of time to really work with students um, to get them to understand that um, and, and, and to curb that. It, it doesn't mean that it goes away. It just means you're working uh, to reduce that. So, but I, June, you've got some great questions and, and I'm, t I'm writing those down and we'll take those back to John to get to you some concrete answers. Okay, thank you, because I guess I'm still confused, because if it's if yep. the number along the side is the number of instances, it looks like we've only had, That's right. it looks like we've had two, zero, one, four, seven, eight in the last, confirmed investigated ones in the last five years. Right. If and, I'm reading and, and that's why I'm saying right. like, that, that's why I'm saying I just don't know and I, I don't want to I don't want to speculate so um, okay. thank you I think Jason has his hand up Molly um, 
Go ahead, Jason. <clears throat> a couple quick questions for Andy. Andy, would you generalize these um, incidents as numerous or regular of the um, five-year investigation that John did? Jason, I, I'm struggling to answer that a little bit um, because I don't know um, how administration over the last five years has looked to address that. Um, as as the director, it wasn't something that was in my purview. Um, you know, um, in a comparison, if I were to look at if, if you're at if I'm if I'm understanding. Maybe I'm asking a clarifying question. Are you asking me, are those numbers somewhat consistent with a building like of our size type of thing? Is, is that what you're maybe asking? No, I'm asking your opinion as the uh, chief uh, boss. <laughs> Do you think that these are numerous or this happens on a regular basis? I, I think that um, um, bullying and harassment goes underreported often. Thank you. And then um, just want to uh, get off of this topic. And uh, the World News Report, um, 2021, we were ranked 15th. This year, we're ranked 16th. Uh, 2021, we had 332 students. This year, 314. Last year, our student-to-teacher ratio was 9 to 1. This year, was 11 to 1. So congratulations. Um, our graduation rate, however, last year was 89% and this year was 84%. Um, and I was fully prepared to discuss this at length um, that we did not improve. And I've been, I've been really wanting to improve. Um, but however, when you look around the uh, state of Vermont, and I'm not trying to point fingers because when you do point a finger, three are pointing right back at you. Um, but our school really i think has done a really good job um you know when you look around other schools and everything else that's going around in the news and front page of the paper so i applaud uh mr broadly for that um and i appreciate all his hard hard work um and i appreciate uh your hard work and also the fact that i saw you at every graduation uh this year so uh thank you for doing that that was uh admirable Thank, thank you, Jason. I, I have to admit, I, I was unable to make two of them, um, which was Saxon's River. I made Saxon's River, so Central and uh, Grafton, just because they were at the exact same time. But um, I, I do appreciate you noting that. So I might be wrong on my numbers, Jason, but I uh, specifically asked our principal when I was signing the diplomas what it looked like. How did it look? You know, what did we? How was our graduation rate? And he told me we had 74 kids and 72 of them graduated. So that to me is 97%. But. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going by what this thing reports. Uh, I don't even know how accurate that is, but. Because I was pretty kind impressed. Of the only information we have sometimes. Yeah, and he yeah, said absolutely. It was, he felt confident that um, by the end of the summer that these other two students would probably get through it so that that yeah. to me would sounded pretty good yeah that is impressive well, i think that that disparity in graduation rate is caused by what's known as four-year cohort number of kids who start as freshmen the number of kids who graduate as seniors yeah, um, yeah. molly i was good i was going to echo just what david said is if Is he done? Yep, I think so. <laughs> he stopped. <laughs> I'm just confused about rank 16th out of the state of Vermont, rank 16th out of what? 16 <clears throat> out of Vermont? So it's, it's 16 out of Vermont. Um, How and many schools are there in Vermont? I'm sorry? How many schools are there, high schools are there in Vermont? I'll get you the exact number, 50. Sits sits in my head, but I could be wrong. Um, um, the, oh, that's good, fifty-ish. Um, 
more like 32. The, the other thing is just what David was saying is you and down in Massachusetts, we used to have this when I worked down in Massachusetts, you got your four year cohort, then you got your five year cohort, then you got your six year cohort. And so, you know, you, you can you can play with those numbers any way you want to. But David is correct. It looks at the number of kids that were enrolled as freshmen and then how many of them in four years graduated. And so you're also looking at past data. You're not looking at the present data. So um, so just to keep that, in, you know, so people keep that in mind, it's not, you know, next year's US News report will reflect this year's graduation class. Some schools could make out really good with that. If we lose <laughs> them and they move to somewhere else and their four year is lower than that. Yeah. Okay, anything else on the principal's report? Is everybody good? 129 schools in general. So let's move on. So we have athletic trainer notification. <laughs> Is that just to tell us that we have one? Yeah, um, um, John does have a, um, has made an offer to a candidate um, who's cer a certified athletic trainer in the state of Vermont. Um, and I just don't have that person's name in front of me, uh, but we just wanted to let you guys know that he, um, he has uh, found someone and we're looking forward to them starting. Is that a full-time position? Um, I'm, I'm not 100% sure of the hour, so I, um, I apologize that I'm not prepared to answer that because I, th I think John was gonna answer some of these questions. So um, I'm digging for him real fast here. All right, committees. Uh, anybody reporting on the WNSU meeting? I was not at the last meeting, so I wasn't there. All right, we'll get it next time. Negotiations. Who's, re who's reporting on that? Mrs. Streeter. Um, the negotiations are going well. Um, we've been working hard. We had a joint meeting last week, and we had. Um, a, a meeting with just the board um, for several hours last week, and we're going to have a marathon session this Wednesday starting at 10, hoping to come up to a signed agreement. Other than that, things are going well. June, where'd you get the time? I haven't heard that yet. Um, that was discussed at our Wednesday joint meeting. And on Friday again. And too. Friday, yes, and Confirmed. Friday. After I left. Okay. Okay, <laughs> okay anybody wanna, anybody have any questions for June? Not much we can ask, but. Um, Esser, who's reporting on Esser? Can we have Andy do that? Um, we haven't had an opportunity just with the with um, the schedules and whatnot, how they've kind of fallen um, to meet. Um, but um, just to, so the high school board is aware, um, we've gotten back almost all of the um, conceptual approvals uh, for things like the auditorium, um, the roof. Um, I'm trying to think off, and I apologize. Um, um, but many of the, projects that we were looking to, to do um, at the high school um, have had have met con concept approval. And so I'm working with uh, Jim DeBell right now to, to then move through the second step, and that's to work towards project approval. Uh, but some of it also is getting back with the committee because we've gotten many of our concepts, our constructions approved. And so we have to go back and look and make sure that we're not spending all of our dollars you know, that we're being equitable in looking at those and where the needs are. Um, and so um, that'll be the next task of that committee is to um, look at all those different proposals and, and see how we're spending those dollars. Thank you. Uh, Building and Grounds Committee, we haven't met in a long time. That's one of Jason's questions is following up on the parking lot and we are going to have a meeting on August 22nd at 530 
It'll be before the August meeting, the school board meeting. Uh, we talked about doing it in July, but it felt like there was a lot of people not around. So um, hopefully we can, you know, get some things started so that we vote on it during, um, you know, for next year. So we get a plan because I do think it's something that's important to work on. Um, most every, I don't think Rockingham ever voted on it, did they? No. Yeah. So that's what we're heading towards is August 22nd. Here? Here, yes. Yeah. So the next thing we have is unfinished old business for discussion and action. Review and approve policies. Priscilla? Um, yes, these policies were all posted on May 18th. Um, and um, so they are out there. We didn't approve them. They, we talked about them last time that they would be on the next agenda for, um, for approval. And that was in our minutes that we just approved tonight, too, that was confirming that. So basically, C10 is prevention of harassment, harassing, and bullying of students. C10P was the procedures that go along with that um, policy. C11 is your student freedom of expression in school sponsored media. That's just media. Um, it doesn't have to do with other freedom of, uh, freedoms of expression. C12 is prevention of sexual harassment as prohibited by Title IX. <laughs> C14 is a policy on Section 504 and ADA grievance for protocol for students and staff. All of those uh, C10, 11, 12, and 14 are required policies and must be in our, our policy manual um, as required by the state and the federal government. They, they're based on their regulations, and so the wording in there is basically based on those things. We also warned F-34, the flags on school property policy. Um, I would move that we adopt those policies, C-10, C-10P, C-11, C-12, C-14, and F-34. I second. There is a motion made to approve the policies listed on your agenda. Is there any questions or comments before we vote? Okay. Jason, how do you vote? Yes. Deb? Aye. Priscilla? Yes. June? Yes. Tanya? Yes. David? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Policies are approved. One question for Priscilla. Mm -hmm. If I could. Are, does this make us almost come up on policies? Um, I can tell you how far off we are. We have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, between eight and 10 more that we need to. Okay. I was trying to look for a date to be able to have a policy committee meeting um, in July, possibly. July 15th, if we don't have any other one. Um, then there, of course, there are recommended policies and optional policies to add to those, but Thank that you. would at least get us updated on those. They're supposed to be updated every three to outside limit five years, <clears> and we're way out of compliance. So we're really getting there. Really proud of the committee. We're really impressive their work on that and their willingness to meet. Good, thank you. So we put, we adjusted the agenda for 8A uh, for Mr. Broadley and Mr. Haas to help us with a punch list to make sure that we were com getting things completed or they were getting things completed. Um, I, I think that, you know, as I listened to how this meeting went tonight and probably, you know, people aired some things just because it needed to be aired and, um, how do you see that happening, Andy? I mean, we have an agenda every week and we have our minutes and we've 
we follow through on those minutes before we do the next agenda? Yeah, I think that, um, I'm sorry, Molly, go ahead. No, I'm waiting for you. Oh. Um, I, I guess, you know, on the agenda, there is unfinished business um, and, and those things that the board is asking, um, if, if there are certain items that they're asking for action on, that those can be put on there. If they're requesting, if a request was made um, similar to like tonight with, you know, explanations of um, U.S. news and world and whatnot, um, you know, um, you know, I, I guess that those are things that we can continue to list under like unfinished business um, or like the harassment data that June was asking about, like just confirming or, or, or clarifying those things. Um, they can sit under unfinished business and we can tick them off as we, we go through them. Um, I, I think the other piece is, you know, noting that if certain items, if they're if the request just for information, um, then that request for information could be sent to administration and we can include those in reports as well. A lot of times when I get agenda items from people, you know, it's not listed separately on the agenda because it's something like Mr. Bradley is going to take care of that in his report. So I don't, you know, I don't break it down because when I meet with, I meet with John before every before we do every agenda and you know I show them the list of you know this is what I got from the board members that they're asking about and a lot of times he says I'm going to get that in my report so I don't I don't list it because I've given it to our principal and it was really a question for him and so that's how I've kind of been reacting to that and it it feels tonight like maybe it wasn't a good enough reaction but you know we've I don't have Jason's list in front of me, but for the most part, I thought I had like the list he had this week um, on the agenda through reports and things. <clears throat> and sometimes, you know, I call you, Andy, because I don't even know where to put something. It's because it, it's hard to put that in agenda, you know? So, um, yeah, we'll work on that. We'll work on it being in the unfinished business. Does anybody else have any comments to that or something that they're looking for? All right, so resignations and appointments, if any. I had a list sent to me. Did everybody get the list where the, who was being hired and who they were replacing? No, I didn't. I didn't. Okay, <laughs> so Andy, correct me, but I think I have this right. Um, this list got sent to my email. It said, Megan Ellis, math replacing Lori Walters, Robert Oakes, math, replacing Jenny McKay, Jennifer Gerritsen, chorus, two-thirds, replacing Richard Smith, Matthew Peister, science, and it was a science opening, Rochelle Boré, art, replacing Anna Majeski. So that was the list that must be John sent it to me. I'm sorry, I just printed it off so it looked like I needed it. Um, we already voted on. I yeah, a lot of those are the, those. Yeah. Except for the so, art one. I don't so remember. I, have, I, I think I can clarify a little bit. Um, it's actually just, the list is a little smaller that we're looking to um, <laughs> uh, get here. I'm just um, trying to. Um, get some information so I can give you it. So, um, so the first one is uh, Rochelle Borette, um, who would be the art teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, we would look, be looking at, and I'm trying to pull that up as I'm, here I'm trying to talk and do two things at once, and I apologize. Um, um, I shouldn't have started with her because I didn't have her. Um, but, um, she comes with a lot of experience in the in experience in the public or the private sector, um, you know, just as an artist, um, but also um, um, 
Oh, there it is. Okay, pardon me. So I got it here. Um, so she uh, would be coming in at a um, a master's plus four uh, step fourteen. Um, as I said, she's worked as an art teacher down in Texas um, and recently relocated up here. She's also worked as a program director um, um, in the Chicago area um, and also as a, an art teacher in Illinois. Um, so, um, you know, John felt very comfortable. I wasn't part of that committee, um, but um, felt that she was very qualified and would add a lot um, to uh, our students. Question, Molly, yes. uh, Michelle, for Ray. Is she certified in Vermont, Andy? I believe a bit of it about Bob. Um, um, I think we had had that conversation back and forth. I think that she is working towards her certification. She's spoken with the state. Uh, we may need to ask for a provisional at the beginning of the school year. Well, um, what I will say is that this candidate appears, based on your testimony, to be well qualified for this position. I was an eye opener when I saw Masters Plus 14, so I was curious what the resume looked like. Um, but um, I think that when we hire teachers, it's also useful to know what their certification status is. Sounds to me like you won't have trouble coming up with a provisional on, on this uh, proposed hire, which I will support, but you know, I just stick with we hire teachers, we should know what we're hiring. It, great point, David. This year and I, it, it, um, has been really challenging, and, and what I've really asked principals to do is, you know, we, um, we, we've got a lot of teachers who are working towards their certification. The state knows it. I mean, it, it's been very difficult across, you know, Vermont to hire teachers. Um, Rochelle, um, I will say she has a um, she has a Bachelor of Art um, in art, um, and then she has um, she has a um, uh, she ten, she has a went through the Corpus Christi um, State University Teacher Certification Program, and then she has a Master's of Science and Education um, from Northwestern University. Um, she taught for four years down in Texas, um, worked for um, six years, um, as I said, as a program director, um, and worked uh, an additional seven years um, in the um, in schools in both Texas and in Illinois. So, sounds like a great candidate. Rizzo. Um, Andy, with the with the six years in program director, though, is that is that what we should be given credit for? Because otherwise, it's only eleven. Yeah, I gave her I gave her partial credit for that. To be honest with you, um, uh, in in the conversations with John um, and the candidacy um, and her strength, um, but. In talking with John, um, the work that she was doing during that time was, you know, working with folks and, and doing things that were, you know, that at times uh, we might provide as um, when people work in the private sector, we will count a half a year or a, you know, a year will only give them a half a year's credit. So, so it was teaching though, but as a program director, sounds look more like administrative. Uh, that is my understanding that it was it was there was an administrative piece to it, but it was also um, in um, you know working working in schools in um, developing programs in school and working with students in those schools um, and providing you know classes and whatnot uh, for the community. Thank you. Um, the other, do you want to do one, of the, one on each? Um, Molly, how would you yeah, like to let's, do, let's get this one done and then we'll go to the next one. Okay. So can I have a motion to 
except Rochelle Moré is the art teacher. I'll make that motion to okay. accept Rochelle Moré as the art teacher. There's a motion on the table. At step. Yep. To At accept step 14. Rochelle Moré, art teacher, and a master's step 14. Are we ready to vote? Deb Wright? Aye. Deb Wright. Jason? Yes. Stella? Yes. June? Yes. Tanya? Yes. David? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Rochelle is our art teacher. What's next? All right, this one's a little confusing, so I'll, I'll try and uh, parse it out. Uh, Katie Eamon um, has been teaching with us, and this current year she is on a year's leave of absence um, because of uh, some childcare issues. Um, she is requesting um, another um, year leave of absence. She was hoping to return. She signed her contract to come back, um, but the daycare situation um, continues to be a struggle for her, as, as we know for many of our parents um, in our community. Um, but so she is requesting an, a, a, um, another year of leave of absence from the board. And the reason why I'm starting with her is because then the appointment to replace her is, is next, but I can't ask for an appointment until after um, we're able to move forward on her um, leave of absence. <laughs> Can I have a motion to accept Katie Iman's request for a one year leave of absence? Uh, would that be um, also just as long as she's not teaching elsewhere? That is my understanding is that she is not teaching uh, Priscilla. Okay. I'll make the motion to accept Katie Iman's year of leave of absence due to daycare deficiencies anybody have any other questions i have a question what what does the um collective bargaining agreement say about uh leaves of absence handy let me pull that up david I, I don't have that in front of me so give me one second please nor do i The motion should probably be without pay. So I would offer on a friendly amendment if that's okay. Mm -hmm. I think it provides no um, step increases as a result. Because we only grant step increases when pay is given. My computer's running a little slow here, David, so I apologize. Um, <coughs> now I should be able to find it because we put it at a table of contents, but for some reason. Um, so um, under Article 12, um, so there is per, uh, there's the personal leave, bereavement leave, sick leave, jury leave, FMLA. Sorry, Article Three is extended leaves. There is a maternity leave, parental leave, adoption, sabbatical. Um, um, How about the extended leave? leave? Yeah, it's, it's for other extended leaves. It says for um, leaves for any other reasons with or without pay may be granted at the sole discretion of the board. I'm gonna offer an amendment motion. And the amendment to the motion is that an unpaid leave of absence uh, is granted and that um, step increases not be allowed for the years of absence from the teaching staff. David, I think that's in there for um, if it's, it, it should be, it always was. If it's in there, it's superfluous, but, that, but, but, but if it's not in there, I, I appreciate your, the, your the redundancy um, 
might prove to be useful. Yeah, I prove. I, I agree. Yep, I agree. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor to accept Katie Emon's year of leave with not being able to occur any steps while she's not working, but she hasn't worked last this year or next year, right? I would ask ask okay. the maker the motion if uh, she accepts it as a friendly amendment. Oh yes. And and that's the motion. Okay. And without pay. And without pay. Yeah. I apologize there. I, it got quiet for me on my end, so I I, <laughs> I realized I got disconnected. So uh Deb, are you still there? Jason Terry, we have a motion to accept Katie Emon's one year of absence with no steps and no pay. Yes. Priscilla? Yes. June? Yes. Tanya? Yes. David? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Katie's got another year with a little child. All right, so the, the, the appointment is for Sarah Kovac. <clears throat> to fill the English position um, that Katie is vacating. Um, Sarah has a, uh, Sarah's been working with us as a um, um, interventionist funded through ESSER funds. Um, and so, um, and she has been working, it's been a, uh, working with the English department and doing interventions uh, with students. Um, and Sarah, would be coming in as a master's on step five. She's currently on step four. Andy, her certification status? Oh, that one I actually may not have. Let me see if I can pull it up. Um, I don't have her actual resume with me. Let me see if I can pull it up. I hope I don't get disconnected. I'll give me one second and um, so she is a level one. Um, Grade seven through twelve for English. It expires in twenty twenty four. Thank you, Andy. Yep. Okay. Can we get a motion? Oh, wait. I have one question first. Well, let's get a motion so we can okay. talk about it. Okay. I I make the motion to accept Sarah Kovac as a long term sub for. Katie Emon's no, 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 a one no, year contract. A one year contract. A one year contract. Not a sub. No, no. one year non continuing contract, probably. Okay, you make it. <laughs> okay. I make the motion for <laughs> Sarah Kovac to be um, provided a one year non continuing contract. I, I don't know if non continuing is the correct word, but it gives, it gives you the, the point of it. Um, as an English teacher, um, while Katie is on leave at a master's step five. It, it would just, if I could just add, uh, offer, it would just be a one year contract. Um, right, one don't year. Need, not continuing. Continuing contract. I, I'll second that. Okay, so we have a motion to accept Sarah Kovac <clears throat> as a one year contract English teacher for Katie Emon's classes. It a step what? Five. 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 Masters five. plus five. And June, you have your hand up. Um, Andy, will she be taking all aspects of Katie's job and starting the drama department up again so we can have some plays? I, I cannot speak to that. Um, I, I don't, I, I, that I can't answer and I apologize, June, but I can get an answer and we can get an email out to the board so the board has that answer. Okay, thank you. And, and with, if she's not, what is our plan to get plays back? Because I think that is vitally important, as important as our sports programming and our other programs. Um, the arts um, are, are an avenue for 
many of our kids to express themselves. So um, maybe we could get Katie back just to do that. That that may be a possibility that we could maybe look into um, uh, if she can come back and and just run those performances. So um, yeah, because that's a separate contract. Yeah, and you know this area doesn't have that much to do, so we really look forward to those plays. <laughs> Uh, can, can we ask Katie first because she's excellent in that category before we I bet Mr. Bradley's right on that. <laughs> yeah. Thank so you. um we are we have a motion on the floor to accept Sarah Kovac as a one year English teacher. Jason, how do you vote? Yes. Debbie you back? Yep. Yep, Deborah Wright, I uh, yeah, I got kicked out. <laughs> Yes. June? Yes. Tanya? Yes. David? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Motion passes. Welcome aboard, Sarah. We Thank are you very much. down to uh, director's comments. Uh, okay. oh, oh, what? Sorry. Can I? I don't know. What do you got? <laughs> I should We're under the... resignation right now. Is this a resignation or an appointment? <laughs> it should be, but it's not. Um, I should have brought this up earlier and I apologize, but there was an email a while ago from John Broadley asking for a hiring committee to um, hire a full-time restorative practice person. And there was a little bit of back and forth. And I was wondering if he went ahead and formed that committee and were advertising or yeah, if not. So, so we, that, that's an SU position. Uh, because it's it's out of it's a grant funded position, um, and so I I've asked all principals just for clarification. I've also asked all principals that to invite a board member to be a part of every committee. I think it's just important uh, for transparency. Um, I don't know who was on that committee, but um, I know the committee met. Um, they brought a candidate forward to me. I'm in conversation uh, with that candidate um, and just. Have not been able to um, solidify anything we were emailing earlier today. So, thank you. Sorry that I dropped the ball on that one. No, I, I was going to mention it in in my report. So, thank you for um, holding me accountable to it. Okay, director's comments. Jason Terry. Nothing, Molly. Thank you. I'm right. I think I said enough tonight. Thank you. I'm set. Priscilla. Um, yes, I was very impressed with the speakers at graduation and with their comments to the class and encouragement for um, their joining the um, community beyond graduation. Uh, I think they did a wonderful job. It was a beautiful night and no rain and the parade was, was absolutely impressive as well just continue to remember to be kind to each other as they put out there as well. Thank you. Yeah. I'm all set. Thank you. Tanya. I'm all set. David. Yeah, I want to uh, state something here. I don't believe the chair is racist. I don't believe the chair is even a latent racist. So if there's the perception that's my belief it's not my belief. However, I do need to point out that the chair is the public face of this school board and that I am hopeful that um, as she does almost all the time, that um, the chair continues to represent this board to the public um, with the, um, what I would refer to as the prestige, which I believe that this board has earned over long years of service to this community. And I do thank you, Molly, for your work here. Um, I certainly was a supporter of your candidacy as chair in early years, because if for no other reason, you were the first uh, chair of the female gender at that point in time within the WNESU, and I think you have continue to serve this board with distinction. 
Um, I took the opportunity to pick on you because it was politically useful in addressing some of the issues such as the letter that we received from our diversity and equity committee. And I admire you for the broad shoulders that you have in shouldering some of the burdens that are thrust upon you, um, whether you like them or not. So, thanks. Thank you. Brenda? Um, I'm pretty much all set, but I did find it concerning in the letter. I believe that the committee has its place, but I wonder how it reports or how it, what, what it brings up because we have an, a negotiating collective. We have contracts for teachers who speak into our kids' lives and educate and teach them. And the letter stated that they were really conscious of and committed to implementing certain things under the Vermont State and the DOE. And I'm just concerned. I'm proud of our status in education or who's who in high school academics and whatnot. And um, I think we should continue to concentrate on that. And I don't know I'm just I'm just kind of concerned about how we do our behavior and moral issues. I believe that uh, the golden rule still applies. I treat you the way I want to be treated, and I think that works still. Thank you. We there's a lot that goes on in this whole community. And we got really, we've gotten hung up on a couple of different things, but what I have found out, probably new all my life, but, um, you know, the more I get involved in the high school, John and I meet pretty frequently, so I get to know a little bit more about what goes into the school. I've gotten to know some of the kids you know i used to think i knew the kids just because they were in school with my daughter but now it's a different get to know the kids and see them out in the public and see them in functions and i sent a representative for the company i work for here to a job fair and he came into my office the next day and he says you're famous <laughs> i'm not famous it's just a name that they've seen and know but but what alarms me a little bit in everything we've talked about tonight and a lot of other nights is that we're, I feel sometimes like we focus on this, on a small group of people that, that we want to make sure we're doing the best we can for them. But the truth of the matter is Andy and I had a great conversation today about a whole, a lot of people in our community that need help that are struggling in more ways than one and to be able to reach every single one of them is is pretty hard and um you know i think that a lot of us have a really good home life and and i'm very you know very proud of what i have and and where my daughter is gonna end up but there are a lot of kids out there that that need some help um and and it's not even just we need to get them that free school lunch it's it's a, it's so much on their plate that they don't even know how to deal with they they don't want to say anything because they don't want to have a, another light on top of them because you know maybe they're the kid that looks different walking down the hallway or something but it's not about race or even harassment or bullying a lot of times, but it's about what they're not letting you know. And um, it's, it's kind of scary and it's something that, you know, we, we have a, we just graduated a, a bunch of really nice kids. They all look me right now, I'm going to shirk their hand. It, it, it's, it's the proudest night of being on a school board is standing up there and being able to just see all those kids and have them all be so proud and have their parents and their friends out hollering and the fire alarms going off because the streeter kid graduated. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, you know, we got to focus on every single one of them, not just the ones that are going to college, not just the ones that are doing whatever they're doing but there's a whole bunch of kids in this society right here that they need attention and um 
I was struggling with that a little bit, and Andy helped me out a little bit today because, you know, what do you do? We can't wrap them all up and take them home, but we need to really pay attention to the whole community because there's a lot of, lot of people out there that won't ask for help and won't say anything, and that's why I'm here. I don't have an agenda. I love kids, and I want to see every single one of them succeed. And it's, there's a lot of kids out there that need some help. So that's all I got. July 25th is our next meeting. Thank you very much. <laughs>